Yes, sir. It's about that time. It's about that time. It's your boy, Reg Dalla. Welcome back. We got the College Hoops 2K23 Golden Legacy Series. It's here. It's finally here. As you can see, the Kentucky Wildcats are the number one team in the nation heading into the year. If you haven't watched the last video, I did a I did a preview. Uh, the prospects that you guys should be on the lookout for and what everybody's team is on. And the first look at the faces for the Golden Fictional Draft class. You know, I, I was on my grind. 2K just came out and I finished all those faces. That's probably like the fastest I did all that. But I was trying to get that out as quick as possible. And we're finally here, though. Kentucky is the number one seed. The four teams, number one, number one team heading into the season. And the four teams we're controlling is Kentucky, Texas, Duke. And Duke is unranked. We're going to get into that in a second. And also UCLA is the fourth team I'm controlling. So Kentucky got the, they got the Davises, Deion Jones, Clay Hooper, Corey Cousins. So five guys. As good as a starting five as anybody in the country, and that's why they're ranked number one. Texas, they got Jeremy Goodson. I don't know how to rank this high. Uh, UCLA has Jabari Mack, Dustin Williams, and Galo Goodrich coming back for his sophomore year. And let's get into everything real quick. We're in the year 2025, so this game came out 2008. So I've been I've done like 13 seasons like leading up to this point, and what happened was. As you can see, Reggie Mack is a uh, he is a he's a walk on. So I ended up simming the season and I forgot to recruit. So like they had like no type of players. So I, like before the season started, I redid like all the rosters and added all the players and stuff like that. So that's who I Duke wasn't gonna be ranked if I didn't add like the the prospects that they added like Reggie Mack, Jay. So that's who's out there unranked to start the preseason. But Kentucky, they already had a bomb squad before. So a lot of what I should say is don't worry about the years. Because as you can see, Carlton Davis and Mo Davis are both seniors. They're not really seniors. It's just I had they had no other uh freshman I could edit. And I just had to put them in I just had to put them in somehow, some way. So it led up to this point, and we are here though. Let's take a look at the rest of the top 25, Texas, Notre Dame, Villanova, UCLA, Arizona. So this could, this could ultimately change. Like two weeks into the season, you, I'll assume Duke is going to be ranked. But without further ado, though, I think it's time. I think it's time that we get into some simming. Let's start it off. First game of the season, Duke versus Chattanooga. And also, I plan on playing probably at least like three games with each team. And we're definitely, all the games are going to be against other talent. So it's probably going to be like, I know for Duke, I'm going to have them, of course, play in UNC. I think I'm going to have them play Arizona, maybe Louisville. They got Austin Mack over there. And probably another team. They play Chattanooga the first game. And easy W. Reggie Mack in his debut, 31 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists. Jay, 11 assists, struggled from the field, though, 7 points. Primo Parker gave you 12 and 10. And Montez Hendrick, 11 points for him. Okay. So we might as well send through the week and then run through the, take a look at the games. All easy ones to start off the so basically like tune up games. Duke beat Vermont. Another blowout victory. Jay Anthony was in foul trouble all game. The one thing I hate about college hoops is like the amount of foul trouble. That shit just kills us so much. Especially like when you're doing the rotation. Cause if one person gets into foul trouble, the whole roster gonna play. Like every single everybody in a rotation gonna play. If you got a scholarship, you're gonna you're gonna get some minutes. Reggie Mack, though, 19 points and showed off his playmaking ability with eight assists, even though he had five turnovers. But another good game for him. 
and UCLA versus St. Mary's. Delon Young is on St. Mary's. That's a prospect, small forward that you guys should be watching out for. Galo Goodrich, 21 points in his sophomore year. Looking to take the leadership role and take another step. And Jabari Mack, the freshman, 17 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals. And then you got Dustin Williams, 11 and 8. DeLon Young, only 12 points, but only played 21 minutes because of that damn foul trouble. And then the number one team took the court together. And my, man, oh man, Mo Davis is a bucket. Just like Reggie Mack, another thir a 30 ball in his first game, 31 points, also gave you five steals. And Carlton, 13 and 13, that's going to be a, that's gonna be the best, the best twins. Going to be the best twins Kentucky ever had, better than the Harrison twins. Clay Hooper gave you 16 as well. And they ain't really mean, need much other than that. Texas. Jeremy Goodson, 26 points. He's going to have the green light at Texas. Already took 20 shots in his first game, getting them things up. He got to the line, though. I'll give him that. All right, so the next game that we actually going to play, that I plan on playing, it's, there's a tournament, the Legends Classic. We got Texas and Seton Hall is also in that. Then the other side of the bracket is Duke versus Boise State. So I can pull that up real quick. The Legends Classic. So I plan on probably what not. Nah, I'm going to tell you guys what happened. Because college hoops really did some whole stuff to me. Because what I was planning on doing for the Legends Classic, I'm like, all right. So I'm controlling four teams. So I'm going to put the four teams I'm controlling. Duke. So when I was making a schedule, I put Duke, Kentucky, UCLA and Texas. Those are supposed to be the four in this tournament. And it ended up only being Duke and Texas. And I wanted to like guarantee a Duke versus Kentucky matchup. And now the only way that could happen if they both make it to the if they see each other in the tournament. But a Mo Davis versus Reggie Mack would have been groundbreaking. Must see. It was supposed to be this. Like if anything, I wish I could just kicked out tech like they should have told me or something. I would have just kicked out Texas out of this and then just put Kentucky on the other side. So, damn near could have been a guarantee. But the first game I played, Duke versus Texas. All that being said. Let's get through the next crop of games. All right, so Florida State versus Texas. We got Oliver Ali. And Tr Trayvon Morris going up against Jeremy Goodson. Let's see what's going to happen. Texas in a blowout victory, 27-11. and 11. Damn, on 25 shots, though. High volume so far for Jeremy Goodson. Let's see if he can improve on that efficiency so far in his first two games. But he has no problem putting that ball in the basket. It might take him down near 30 shots, but he can get them things in the room at the end of the day. Michigan State versus Kentucky. Tyson Dawkins on Michigan State. Other than that, they don't really have anybody too crazy. They about to get smacked. Blowout. Victory. And Deion Jones starred in this game. 22 points, 12 rebounds, 16 for Carlton Davis. Mo had 11. Clay Hooper had 8. They have four guys that could give you 20 on any given night. These four guys could give you 20 on any given night. I don't know how many teams in the country that could really say that. Texas got an easy game. Uh, UCLA, might as well send more. Oh, this is a tournament at the end. What tournament is this? And a Paradise Jam. Oh, my God. 80 to 41. Jeremy Goodson. Has not been efficient at all to start off the season. 6-19 and in this game against bad comp. They scored 12 in the second half. Jesus. Now they play TCU. Skip Fletcher's on the other side. And then we got a Kentucky versus St. John's. And I scheduled this matchup 
because the Davis twins are from New York, and they're going to they're going to the Garden to play at St. John's. A little homecoming for them, and Jay Anthony goes down with the lower back strain. And the problem with this Duke, Duke squad, they're not deep at all. Not deep at all. I forgot to recruit the year before, so they got basically all walk-ons. Like, if you saw Reggie Mack, he was supposed to be a walk-on. And I just made him a player because they had basically, basically half the roster was walk-ons because everybody else left the year before. And a lower back strain for Jack. Golly. Come on, bro. They cannot afford injuries. And Texas are in the final, smacking TCU 28 and 16 for Jeremy Goodson. Monster on the glass so far 24 and 11. Oh my God. Looking like Mike Beasley or something out here. Now they play Rhode Island and the chip. You gotta bring it home, right? Gotta bring it home, right? They lost. Oh, my God. Texas lost by three. Upset victory. 21 for Jeremy Goodson. So, he didn't shoot awful from the field, but they still lost. On the other side, what happened? Big man. Now, nah, the names in this game really be crazy. Now, nah, I'm going to hold you. The names really be crazy. But they really lost. That's tough. Let's take a look at everything else that happened. Reggie Mack had a triple-double against Oral Roberts. 24, 12, and 13. 14 for Primo. And on the other side, Noah Berry. You know there's always that one player that go up to Duke, that go to Duke, and Cameron Endor light it up. That was Noah Berry tonight, even though they got smacked. Definitely put everybody on notice with 25 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, and 5 steals in that game. Was definitely the second best player on the court. But triple-double with me, Reggie Mack? Hold on now. Hold on now. Alright. UCLA plays somebody, right? Uh, all right, Jabari Mack had 27 points, six rebounds. Khalil Gilbert struggled from the field, but still contributed on the boards and an assist. And 25 for Dustin Williams. So the two freshmen led the way in this game, winning by 40. And then Kentucky went to St. John's and ended up winning. J.J. King on the other side, another New Yorker, freshman. 15 points and 8 rebounds average and has 17 and 8 in that game. 21 for Mo Davis. And Corey Cousins had 4 steals and 4 blocks. So the stocks was up for him. And now Texas got a back-to-back. -back. Do they got they play three straight games in a row? Oh no, nah, they got another back-to-back -back after losing in that tournament. Let's see if they can have a bounce back game. And they're going to be heading to another tournament after this. Somebody got injured. I feel like they lost. They took another L. Texas is collapsing right in front of our eyes right now in the beginning of this season. I was ranked the number two team and lost to two unranked teams on back-to-back -back days. 31 for Jeremy Goodson. The rest of the team didn't do anything, and it was getting lit up. Two bench players had double figures. And now Texas is going to play Seton Hall in the next game. Also, damn, one thing that also pissed me off about this is if Seton Hall beats, beats Texas and Duke beats Boise State, they're going to be playing each other. And I already scheduled a game for later on for them to play each other. Because I didn't think they was about to be in the same tournament together. So look at all this. Messing up messing up the whole plans. But hopefully Texas take care of business. and gets, gets a bounce back game. But it ain't looking good for them this week. L after L. Alright, they took the dub. And watch Duke lose. 
All right. So both teams took care of business, and that's going to be the next game. 29 for the point guard. Okay. 16 for Jeremy Goodson. On the other side, Prince Aminu, 20 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists. Looking to have a big year three for Seton Hall. And 15, only 15 for Reggie Mack. Six rebounds, eight assists. They really don't have a guy since that. A real point guard since Jay left. I don't know who this brother is. Another walk-on on the team. Primo Parker has seven. Montez had 13 and eight. Let's see what's going on in the with other teams. Am I bugging? Yeah, I was trying. Damn, yeah, I'm thinking it's uh NCAA where they show like the top twenty five, like games of the top twenty five. Yeah, they definitely don't have that on here. All right, so let me just go to standards and see what other teams are doing. So far, Auburn is 4 and 0. We can start off in the ACC. North Carolina is 5 and 1. Louisville 3 and 1. Okay. 4 and 1 Georgetown. I wonder who they play. All right, so they beat they beat Arizona by four. Nah, all right, we definitely gotta take a look at some of these games. Let me go. All right, ACC. So if there's any interesting matchups, we could take a look at the box scores of that, and then we could get out of here. Louisville, did they play anybody interesting? Uh, I I just had to check this. I knew Austin Mack went off in this first game. 32-9-7. So the debuts for the freshmen, they are here. They out here looking like seniors. They out here looking like all Americans in their first game. Like they've been here and done that. But it's called the goaded professional draft class for a reason. Cause they don't. They don't ones. North Carolina played Tennessee and lost. That's the only loss. Two or thirteen. Dustin Day struggled. Matt Adams, Mr. Reliable. Jalen Miller only had nine. Was in foul trouble. Uh hmm. Georgetown. All right, let's take a look at this. They lost to Iowa State, but I think Iowa State got late. They got hella vets, I think, on their team. 21 and 17 for Rich Mack and three blocks. Did have six turnovers, so they was probably sending hella double teams at them. Triples. 23-13, 6 against Arizona. Danny Tyler had 25. Yeah, he ate he ate the big man's lunch. <laughs> he ate the big man's lunch. Giving him work. What are you doing the first game? Play Ryder. 37 and 13 for Rich Mack. Took 21 free throws in his first game. Nah, this man is a monster. This man is a monster. I went to Ryder too. I can't imagine seeing a freak like him. They play Temple. Temple is ranked. Wasn't it good at one point, like a little bit in the 90s? Uh, let's Big Ten. I don't think there's anybody in the Big Ten. Michigan. They play Duke coming up soon. Uh, all right, maybe Big 12. Is there? Any, did they play any good games? We only two weeks into into the season, so. We might have to end it over here because I, 
I haven't found anything. Oklahoma State, Arkansas. All right, we almost there. We are almost there. Oregon, did they play anybody? I know they got uh, their next game. Oh, Oregon got a tough schedule coming up. Arkansas, Texas Tech, Baylor, Texas. Shit. I don't know how they about to survive. They non-conference scheduled out getting a couple more L's. Did they catch one already? Oh, they're undefeated right now. They're probably about to lose two of those games. And I'll move Gonzaga to the Pac-12 in this. They got Kentucky on a matchup, so we definitely about to play that. They beat Arkansas. Rico Ryder had 12 points. So we had a head-to-head -head matchup between two freshmen, two freshmen, two guards, Rico Ryder. Going up against Scott Kane. And Scott Kane definitely won that matchup. 23 points for him. Struggled from the field, but got to the line. And Blake McCabe, the big man, had 20 points and 8 rebounds. Joe Banks, 10, damn near triple-double. Struggled from the field, but stuffed the stat sheets. 19 boards, 8 rebounds. Three assists. I mean, three steals and three blocks. Did I say eight rebounds? It was eight assists. I'm recording at one o'clock in the morning, so cut me some slack. Cut me some slack. All right. Alabama. Oh, they only play one good team. They should only have... If they're a good team, they should only have one loss coming out of the schedule. This is a cakewalk. They got a cupcake schedule. All right, other than that, it's too early this season, too early into the season, so no heavy hitter matchups other than the one that we saw so far, but in the Prudential Center, Duke and Texas in the next episode. Stay tuned. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It's your boy Reg Dollar. I'll see y'all in the next one.